It is UFC welterweight, CFFC veteran, and Memphis's own Danny Barlow, which you can just call him left hand to God, who I know is anxiously awaiting his second UFC fight. So, Danny, what's it like right now, man? I know there's been some uncertainty, some changes, some injury, but you're about ready to get back. So what's it like for you right now? Oh, uh, man, it's, it's pretty good, man. Like I said, it's always just keeping my mind on, on the prize, bro, keeping my eyes on the prize. So it's like it's just the process, man, enjoying the process. You know what I'm saying? Like it's grown man business, man. So I'm always, I know what you know. I know what the what the job requires. So yeah, it's all good. That's absolutely great, man. So all right, February you had your first UFC win. It was a TKO victory. It was a great fight, and I know that's a moment that everybody dreams of, right? That first UFC win. So how yeah. did that experience all play out? Versus, I'm sure you had imagined it and thought about it and dreamed about it. How did it all play out versus the way you had thought it might be? I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's like, man, it's always bigger than what I dream. Like I said, like, I just, when I put it in God's hands, man, he, he give people the vision that he want, you know, he want to see, you know what I'm saying? So that's really, like, I just didn't know what to expect, you know, I just knew I was ready. I just knew, you know what I'm saying, God in control, man. So, yeah, that's why, you know what I'm saying? So it played out bigger than I could ever imagine, man. I see why a lot of guys want to be in the UFC, bro. It's great, man. It's just exactly what you think it is and more, bro. <laughs> I love it. Now, here's the, here's the crazy thing. You broke your left arm in the fight, and you posted the x-ray. This was not like a little fracture or a hair. I mean, this was a break. And yeah. you revealed later that it was in the first round that that happened, and you finished yeah. the fight in the third. So just talk to me about, like, what kind of pain you were in, what you were feeling, and, and how hard was it for you to keep going? Man, to be honest, bro, the pain, it, you know, I could feel it when it broke. And it was just the grinding part. It's just after it broke, I knew it was broke. It was just I, every time I hit him, the grinding. And it just felt, you know, that weird feeling. But the pain is, it, the pain just wasn't greater than the, than the moment. It wasn't greater than the situation, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I knew I still was alive. I still was breathing, man. And, I, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big I'm big old going to sleep. If I ain't sleep, bro, I'm working, bro. You know what I'm saying? If I ain't sleep, I'm working. So, um, yeah, I had a quick thought about it. I thought everybody seen it. It's like, for some reason, you feel like the reactions be so big. But, man, when I look back and watch it, I didn't know when I broke it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't tell. But when I broke it, I thought he knew it. You know, I thought everybody knew it. So I was like, bet. So I just, you know, the mindset was, like, okay, um, I just wanted to close the, you know, actually was to go harder. Like, basically push forward because at first I was kind of keep picking my shot, keeping range. But, you know, I didn't want him to catch a kick and, and take me down because I didn't want to grapple with a broke arm. So really, I was like, man, if I'm throwing it, I ain't want him to kick it, so I was throwing it. You know what I'm saying? So if I threw it, in my mind, I was like, man, if I if I if I show any reaction towards it, he gonna kick it. You know what I'm saying? So I was just trying to keep him from kicking it, bro. I was just trying to, you know what I'm saying? So the mindset was like, hey, I ain't dead, man. I'm still breathing. I ain't sleep, so that's work. That's incredible. That's why that's why you guys are something different. One of us out here breaks our arm. We're we're tapping out. We're getting out of there. We're going to yeah. we're going to the hospital right away. So yeah. Here's the thing. So you break your arm, but I saw you're back in the gym like a month later. I mean, uh, I guess was there t was there talk of people trying to tell you like, hey man, stay out of here, stay away, go heal up, or, or why were you like, no, I'm I'm getting back in the gym. I mean, bro, you understand, man. You got you got five different limbs. I, mean, I say you get well, you got more weapons than that, but you got uh, four other limbs, man. That you know, that, or three other limbs that you can use, man. Um, five if they count headbutts. You know what I'm saying, but. You got, you know, you got three other limbs that you can use, bro. So it's like, man, you got always got something to work on. You got always got footwork. You always got uh so yeah, we were just working on that lead hand, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like it's always an opportunity. Like I said, if I ain't sleep on working, man, um, I believe you can overdo it. But the thing about it, you get it's it's like it's when you uh it's if I did rest the arm in, in the sense of saying like I wasn't uh I took some time, I let the arm rest, but I ain't have to rest. You know what I'm saying? So Watch that's what it was. The arm can rest. I ain't I'm not resting. Man. Much respect. All right, so we mentioned you were going to get back. In June, it was announced that you were going to fight on August 10th in Las Vegas against Uros Medic, uh, but we found out in early July that he's hurt and he's out. Um, so I guess how tough was that for you, right? I mean, you had a date count. You had a, you had an opponent. You're ready. How hard is that for you to just kind of keep going, from what I understand, fighting on that day, but not knowing in the meantime who it's going to be? Is that is that tough for you to keep your focus and your mindset when that's the situation? Man, everything tough, man. It's, it's, it's what the game is, bro. Like, this life. I feel like you either going to fight the struggle or you're going to fight the success, man. So I'm going to fight the success, bro. So I just feel like, yeah, him pulling out was, you know, what all, a lot of my opponents did, man. So it's something that I'm used to. I'm not used to having, you know what I'm saying, easy, like, situations. So it's like it just – it was just like all my other situations. It was like, yeah, another opponent pulled out. Like, every time they give us a name, coach, like, you know there's not the person we fight, right? We're like, yeah. So we was 
bro, we was expecting it, bro. It's just I was mad. I was in. Um, of course, I'm. A, I'm gonna play the game. You know what I'm saying? This. This is the UFC is the new WWE. So. You know what I'm saying? You got, you know, I can't let you off, you know, smooth like that. So I had to, you know what I'm saying? So I had to check him. But he didn't post that x-ray, bro. So even when I broke my arm, everybody like, oh, man. But I'm like, bro, you got to post that x-ray, bro. So if you if you cracking reels, bro, we got to see that. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like the fans, you know, I feel like everybody was going to get on them because, like, you know what I'm saying? We don't have that evidence. We don't have, you know what I'm saying? So you just really, you just pulling out. We don't know why. So they say, I, so they say he ducked. I believe he ducked. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. I think the whole UFC duck, man. You know what I'm saying? I think the whole Kill Cliff ducking. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people wow. I think ducking, bro. So it's cool, though. <laughs> well, listen, we're, wait we're waiting on official news. But as we're sitting here, uh, I I a little inside knowledge. A little birdie told me that the new name on the table is Nikolai Veratinikov. Uh, what, what do you know? Has this been signed? Is, is, is this ready to go? Are you, are you turning your attention to this man? Hey man, I don't know, man. If you got the insight, let keep that on the inside. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, if, 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 if that's what you got, man, you know what I'm saying? That's what you got. You didn't get you hear from me, but not yet, man. You know, I can't get I can't explain, you know, I can't put that out there, you know, disclose that right now. But like I said, well, but, we, yeah. we will wait, we will wait for official news. So hey, let me ask but, you something like what like through all this, man, through your rise up, you know, through through CFFC to get to the UFC, through the injury. Uh, one thing that I see about you, every chance you get, you let people know that you're repping Memphis. So I just yeah. want to know, like, why is it so important for you to let people know that, hey, I'm Memphis born and bred. This is this is the place I represent. Why is that such a, you know, an important part of you? Because, man, you got to understand, bro, um, like coming from Memphis, you know, I always understand the, uh, the stigmas and the, uh, the reputation. You know what I'm saying? It's, and a lot of it is true. You know what I'm saying? But one thing you can't deny about Memphis is our, our swag, man. Uh, you can't, you know, our originality, you know, our um, hand that we have in music, our hand that we have in the culture, you know what I'm saying? But it's one thing you can't deny, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like it's the first time Memphis having somebody to really uh, do it like I'm doing it, um, approaching the level, you know what I'm saying, with Memphis resources, like screaming Memphis' name, you know what I'm saying? I feel like anytime Memphis uh, gets someone like that, they deserve to get a shout out. Memphis deserves a sh shout out, man. And I just feel like I'm I'm still in Memphis. I I love Memphis and I'm I'm connected to Memphis and that's why I'm where I'm at. You know, so you got guys that's from Memphis that they could they could say, you know, California, you know, they moved here, they moved to Detroit, they moved they were originally from Memphis, but you can you can give those uh uh they can basically give the credit to where they at. They give the credit to Texas, they get the credit to, you know what I'm saying, when they moved out of Memphis, you know what I'm saying? But to do it with Memphis, with Memphis resources, is the first time it have ever been done in history, you know what I'm saying? Do it with Memphis, with Memphis resources, you know what I'm saying, on this level. like that's, So I think that's the important part I want people to understand, you know what I'm saying? I love it. And the other thing I see, you and Coach Brian Hall, Law School MMA, you guys are always spending time with the kids of Memphis as well, right? You're giving back to the community, you're trying to show them, you know, the right path, so you know, why is that something that's important? Because, listen, I mean, you're fighting at the highest level of the game right now. Spare time, you don't have a lot of it. you got to commit yourself. So why yeah. is it that you sacrifice to get back to these kids in Memphis? Man, to be honest, bro, that's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Like, once you get to a certain point, you got to have your hands on the kids in some type of way. I feel like everybody is, that don't have their hand in, in any um, programs that's helping kids or hands-on with kids, I feel like you're wasting life. You're wasting your time. This is our future, and that's the truth. It's gonna always be the truth. I was once somebody, you know, once the future. You know what I'm saying? Now, you know, but I was inspired by those people like myself that came and lent a hand. And I noticed at that age, those things really matter. You know what I'm saying? Giving those kids that time, giving those kids those words of aspiration, loving them kids, giving them time, the quality time. The, like basically like the, the, the acts of service that you uh put in with those kids that I, I remember it all. You know what I'm saying? I remember somebody gave me a PlayStation 1 when I was like six, bro. And I remember it. Like, I love dude for that, man. You know what I'm saying? I so I feel like as a kid, that's where people can make their mark. And it's going to be a lot of negativity that, you know, that, that affect the kids. So it's like you just want to put something in they, in they, in they journey of growth and development. You want to put something, you know, positive in their life that's going to stick. I love it, man. That's a beautiful message. Well, listen, yeah. I'll pull back the curtain a little bit and let you know. Danny is at a wedding right now. Left hand of God is taking time away from some personal time to spend some time with us. So I won't take any more time, but I'll just ask you that. 
We'll, we will await official confirmation, uh, yeah. and I look forward to it. But I guess the name doesn't matter right now. What really matters is the result does. We know you're going to see you on August 10th in Las Vegas. Yes, sir. So let me just ask you, what's your, go what's your goal? I know you've been itching to get back in. What's your goal for that? You uh, got any messages? Man, have fun, entertain, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, win, lose, or drive. I, I sound so uh, hypocritical when I say it ain't all about winning, man, being undefeated. But it's the truth, man. You got to have fun because if you constantly try to – got to say this is a new level this is a higher level um i have fought some great guys very strong guys some guys i still feel like better than a lot of guys that's taking up space in the ufc you know what i'm saying i have had a lot of hard fights outside the ufc but in the ufc i think i had one of the hardest matchups you can have like dealing with a guy like quillen that's the most durable one of the most durable guys um and to get in there and get a finish on him you know what i'm saying it, it's, it's it's definitely like you know it, it speaks you know for itself but um, so right now, man, the game plan is always getting her have fun, man. But now that I'm in here, I can really show some of that Danny Sway, some of that I can loosen up a little bit and just try some stuff. And if I try, like, basically being me, you know what I'm saying, might get me in trouble, you know what I'm saying? But it's, it's, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's always about testing the product. So now I'm going to test my product, man. I'm going to have some fun, put some more swag in there, be a little loose. Because, dude, I don't even like, I don't like to get touched, bro. And then these last fights, man, we've been going there like, A-Zone, A-Zone. Like, man, let's get in their mouth. Let's be like, so it's that not, that's not me. It's not ever been me. I've, I've always been more so an uh, Ian Gary finisher, though. I ain't, I'm finishing fights. But I've always been like a no, touch, don't get touched, hit, don't get hit type of guy. But now it's been about getting, like, getting on Dana White's tennis series. Bro, we need the contract. Time to get in his mouth. Like, against a, a knockout artist, Rambo, you know what I'm saying, Raheem Forrest. Man, Josh Quillen, one punch man for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, one punch knockout and get in there and get with a broke arm, get in his face. So, at the same time, I'm always looking forward to my opponents. After they sign their contract, they telling me they ready. You know what I'm saying? So, they Superman until they they they, they legit. I don't, I don't downplay no guy. It's, 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 you know, they legit. So, I'm looking forward to feeling, you know what I'm saying, this new level. And I hope, hope hopefully, he bring it. So, I'm more so looking forward to what these guys are bringing to me. Like, what lesson are they teaching me? Can they teach me anything? If they can't teach me, you know what happened to them every time, man. If it ain't nothing to learn, it's something to burn. You feel what I'm saying? That's when so. the left-handed guy comes right down the pipe. Yes, sir. <laughs> Awesome. Danny, I appreciate it. I'm speaking of having fun. Go have fun with your friends out there. Enjoy the wedding. Yes, we're going to see you August 10th hey, in Las Vegas. Shout out to Memphis, shout out to Memphis Tennessee, man. Uh, thank, hey, shout out to the whole my Westwood, man, community. That's where I'm from, man. Shout out to you guys, man. Appreciate the UFC. Um, we want to get better, man. We want to do better. And like I said, man, appreciate you, bro, for the opportunity, man. Shout out to Brian Hall. Shout out to Law School. Man, man, all my coaches, man. I got a team full of great coaches. Omar Boyd, um, Terry Johnson, man. Uh, like Omar, you know, like, look, man, hey, yo, like, you know, we got this guy, some real killer coaches, man. Brian Alaw Hall, you know what I'm saying, my teammate, my Paul Kemper, my Jaleel Willis fight on the second um, in, in a PFL. So, man, we doing great things. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great schedule, and we ready to work, man. Shout out to 4K, man. Boy getting married today, man. So, yeah, man. So, yeah, we're going to do something, man. So, we making moves, bro. Appreciate you, man. Shout out to hey, everybody on your team, on your side, too, bro. Always great to catch up with you, Danny. Have fun. We'll see you in August. All right, man.